black thing go from left to right, and I thought, I'm going to die out here. No one's ever going to know. I couldn't believe what my eyeballs were showing me. I'll, I'll never forget how evil the eyes were. It was horrible. I mean, I've never seen nothing that evil. It ran towards me at a, at a rate that I, I, I can't even explain. Turned and stared at me. And this look of, I just want to kill you. I want to say it was human, but it wasn't. He was, he, was, he was yelling at me to grab a gun, grab a gun. I was like, for what? He said, just grab a gun. And there's footprints all the way to the door of my house. It had went inside my garage all the way to the door. 911, what are you reporting? Jesus Christ, you better... Sir? See ya. Hello? Get somebody out here. What's going on now, sir? That son of a bitch is about six foot nine, I don't know. Do you see him now, sir? Yes, I'm looking right at him. Uh-oh. You're listening to Sasquatch Chronicles. Check us out online at sasquatchchronicles.com. If you've had an encounter, email me. My email address is wes at sasquatchchronicles.com. Welcome to the show, everyone. Thanks for being here tonight. Got a great show planned for you tonight, Sunday night. Gosh, it's getting cold out there, isn't it? Scraping my windshield off. Seems like just yesterday I was complaining about the heat. Uh, Now I'm complaining about the uh, (laughs) the cold. Can't make a guy happy, I guess. Uh, Got a great show planned for you tonight. Thank you again for being here. Going to be talking to Kyle. And Kyle comes to us from Virginia. And he had a very, and when I say face-to-face encounter, he had a literal face-to-face encounter with one of these creatures, and it's always bothered him. But it might shock you to to hear what the creature did as it approached him. Uh, Then I'll be talking to Ryan, who comes to us from New York, and Ryan was out camping. One of these things approached his tent, made some strange monkey-like sounds, and then uh, walked off. And what happened next is very odd. And we'll go into that tonight. And I've heard I've heard this a few times, more than a few times, actually. Uh, if you've had an encounter, shoot me an email. My email address is wes at sasquatchchronicles.com. And if you get a chance, please check out sasquatchchronicles.com. You can become a member and get additional shows. Let's get down to business tonight. Kyle, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me, Wes. Well, thanks for being here, man. I really appreciate it. And I know your encounter took place in Virginia um, on a property. Did it take place behind the property or on the property you lived on? Yeah, it was basically directly behind my house, uh, past my backyard. Uh, went, went into these uh, woods that, as far as I know, uh, don't have a name. Uh, I think it might just be, I guess, part of the neighborhood. It has a couple things joining to it, like a little bit. I know there's this um, this is old, like shop that's up in there that my dad used to work, but we no longer have that, but okay. just, yeah, it's a good, good size forest and stuff. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's easily three miles at least, you know, from this pond to, to the road. And that's pretty far back, pretty far back there from my house is, and the probably overall walk from my house is easily a couple miles but all right cool i think i got a picture well tell us what happened what were you doing and walk us into what happened what did you see i had head back there had all my fishing equipment to this place uh, i love to go fishing called the uh, i just called it the beaver pond uh, because the, they had beavers there beaver dam and something just something i always look forward to because it's very quiet very peaceful Pretty, pretty kind of a little hard trek because it is kind of a little rugged back there in the first bit, uh, but it, it quickly levels out. There's a, there's a couple ponds here and there. There's, there's a couple of dirt clearings, uh, grassland. Overall, it would be fun. I was just had to head back there to do some fishing. Had, had some perch in there, some, some bass, largemouth, smallmouth, uh, some bluegill, and it was probably about. I stayed out there for a couple hours, and it was probably about uh, 6 o'clock when I, I was, the sun was starting to set. 
and I was saying, you know, pro probably be best to head back. I uh, don't want to have to head back when it's too dark. And I've made that mistake and before and uh, kind of got a little lost out there. Um, but I had probably about a quarter of the way home when I really just got hit with, I, I smelled it before anything else. It was the best described, it, a skunk smell, but mixed with kind of B.O. And, but the way I described it, it wasn't, this is going to sound weird to describe it. You know how like a skunk smell, it's kind of like, it's so powerful, it, you can, like, feel it peak in your nose. I, I, I have no other way of describing yeah. it. It's like, yeah, I know exactly it's what you kind of like stinging. It, it wasn't as, like, that potent, but it was overall, it smelled worse. And it was just really powerful. And then off to my right, I'd say probably in the brush, at least uh, 10 yards, I could hear brush cracking. There's plenty of wildlife out there. You got deer, foxes, raccoons, all that stuff. But at, at this time, I, I'm not really that much of outdoors and can't really identify animals at this point. And I just assumed uh, possibly a, a group of deer, possibly maybe moving through there or something. Uh, I think we even got report of a long time ago, a black bear that had been through there. Uh, so I just pass it off, try to remain calm. Uh, I got to this little clearing. It's a nice, nice little, it has a little glass, grassland and has a little stream running through it. And pretty much as, as soon as I entered this clearing, I was met by probably the biggest thing I've ever seen. It was brown, had, didn't have really any hair on the face. And this thing... Even back then, I, I thought I was tough in this day. I think I'm tough. This thing made me a, a wimp pretty much instantly. I did not move, did not attempt to move. I just stood there and st stared. And I, I kind of just didn't know what to do. I, I, of course, I heard of, you know, I heard it like Sasquatch and stuff, but I n didn't think of it because it's kind of one of those things that even if you believe it, you kind of really don't believe it until you see it. This thing easily, even now, I'm, I'm six foot three, and I'm fairly confident this thing would easily still dwarf me like I was nothing. Uh, my estimate's probably seven to eight feet tall. Uh, the body size structure, muscular, but not overly. I'm kind of a bit more, a little more lanky, kind of like, basically a very athletic human of that size that would be naturally like a just uh like a Shaquille O'Neal guess would be a fair comparison and it just didn't do anything really when I stumbled upon it it didn't make any noise and it kind of got a little closer and I was honestly thought well th this is it this is this is the day I I'm not going to make it and it seemed to kind of, I guess, check check me out. Not kind of like inquisitive as to kind of like, okay, what what's this thing that has entered, you know, my, my home? What is it, what she's doing here? However, I, it kind of more, as I, time went on, I saw it, it was more kind of curious. Like it was really trying to figure out, I guess, who, or what I was. And when he said uh, it moved closer toward you, what did you take a step? It, it, it took a step. It took a stride forward, and uh, my eyes widened that this thing come closer. But after a step, uh, it, it kind of stopped. Kind of looked. It kind of looked me over. Kind of looked me in the face, and this thing's eyes were fairly, fairly normal. Uh, really dark, kind of brown. Kind of not quite. Dark, dark brown, but I'd say probably like, uh, I guess, deep oak kind of color. As this thing basically stared me down, and it it just l looked me over, and it kind of re reached out, and it this thing you know the uh, the part in between your your pecs 
when it it tapped me three times, this thing's fingers took up the whole the whole little part. And they weren't they were firm but they weren't hard and it kinda made a kind of a grunt, like and it kinda flipped me over again and what I could really best describe as it not bearing its teeth pushed its upper lip up with its bottom one. Kinda like if you were trying to smell your bottom lip. Kinda looked me over and made this noise. It wasn't a yell, wasn't a roar, wasn't a scream. But it kinda looked like it peeked over me. Well, uh, not peek, this thing just looked right over me. I, I I can't even describe the sound it made, but the best I could describe it is <laughs> and it, it kind of like was nodding its head as it did it. It stood there probably a couple more seconds and it proceeded to walk past me to the little bit of forest that was behind me and to my right. And after I stood there at least another minute, until I really couldn't hear anything, and I patted myself. I looked around in disbelief of what had just happened to me, and then I, I quickly continued my way home. And I I never went out for a very long time. This is stuck with me, even up until today. I'm kind of nervous when going out in the woods alone. I, I prefer to go armed now. Uh, usually yeah. I used to just go out there and enjoy nature. But Yeah, there's nothing wrong with being afraid, and it is always a good idea to go out with someone else besides yourself. Um, I'm curious, this happened a couple of years back when you were a lot younger. How tall were you at this time? Yeah, it was uh, back in 2014. I, I was pretty tall. I was a pretty tall kid throughout uh I hit a massive growth spurt, so I'd probably say estimates five eight to to five five ten easily at that time. Uh, about the time I got out of eighth grade, I was already six foot tall, and I kind of slowed down from that point. So I'd, I'd probably say around that five five foot eight five foot ten at the time. Yeah, the behavior really interests me, Kyle, that happened to you in your encounter and how the creature came to you. There's an account from Alaska where a 12-year-old boy was out hunting and he was by himself and he stumbled upon these three creatures and they came up and surrounded him. Um, and they he kept his head down looking at the ground the whole time and he was just standing there shaking. And one of the creatures, I guess, growled and then later grunted at him and the three creatures walked off. It sounds like it was you know, his encounter and how close this thing walked up to you, they sound very similar. Uh, did you tell anyone about your encounter? Honestly, I've told my girlfriend, a couple close friends, and I haven't told anyone else because my, my mom, she she doesn't believe in Sasquatch or anything. She always sees it, and she's just like, oh, you know, that's make-believe, all that's mythical. My my father, he, he, he – no, thinks there's something out there, but he can't really explain it. And I, I knew if I told him, he he would simply look at me as like, "No, you're joking. Don't be serious." But I, I pretty much kept it to myself. I, I really didn't spread it to really anybody. Only, only the people I knew wouldn't, you know, call me crazy or, or something. Yeah. Yeah. No, I understand. I understand that completely. Um, it makes me wonder why it wasn't aggressive. I think. Personally, uh, or, or go ahead. I because there were a group of rednecks. They they went around there. They they tore the hell out of this little dirt clearing with ATVs. They fired rifles back there. I well, I think it did. It probably thought maybe I was one of them, and it was like, okay, this this is this is similar smell to what normally is out that with the things that come out here. Maybe it's one of them. Let's let's get rid of them. But when it, I guess it kind of realized or something, I wasn't one of them, and I I wasn't doing what they did. So it, I guess it kind of went, well, okay, this this isn't what exactly who what I was looking for. He's not he's not moving. He's basically being submissive. 
I'm I'm just I'm just gonna carry on my way, and because at the time I was headed out, and I I think it kind of understood. I guess that's a kind of weird word to use for for a creature, but kind of understood that I I wasn't out there to cause trouble for it or anything out there. I was just out there to kind of do my own thing away from everything else. Yeah, that's definitely an interesting take. You know, I was thinking more along the lines of, and you could be right on, on what you're, what you're thinking there. I was thinking more along the lines as, you know, this is a property you'd walked many times, probably since you were a little kid or ever since you guys moved in there. Um, I know you had talked about beaver dams and, and seeing a lot of things as you walked around and probably had seen you a million times. You guys came face to face and it probably knew who you were, probably had seen you a couple of times and maybe that's why it wasn't aggressive. They're not stupid. I mean, these creatures aren't oh, stupid, oh, no. whatever I, they are. I, one thing I can tell you is they're not stupid. They're, 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 they're definitely intelligent and I would not be surprised if it had seen me before because I had been back there plenty of times, even when I was way younger. It's, I was the house I grew up in. I currently don't live there because I'm up closer to my mom to be with my little brother and stuff. And me and my dad used to go back there, used to camp. And I I knew of one thing that I do hear, like I, the one thing I know I hear some people that kind of get is my dad says he went camping out there and he said he, he just was laying down and just heard a, and, or like a big snort. And at first he, he even told me, he was like, well, I, I thought, I thought, you know, he, he was like, I, I was freaked out for a bit. I thought, you know, Sasquatch was there. And then he was like, then I got the more thinking about it. And he said, that's a buck that had just stumbled up on me. And he was trying to figure out what I was. And yeah. he, he basically told me that deer, when they, if they stumble upon you, and like they didn't know they were there, they'll they'll snort really loud, and they'll be like a little bit of ways, but it sounds like they're right next to you. Yeah, well, he's right about that. But you know, I think because this thing had snorted at you, or kind of a grunt—not really a snort, I guess you'd say more of a grunt—is that how you would describe it? Yeah, it, it, it it's kind of like a like someone got your attention, and I guess you want to like I guess kind of you want to just <clears throat> like it's kind of like something you would make when you shrug like it was like oh this is what it is it's 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 like it's not really amused by like what's going on i guess i really don't know how to explain it but it was yeah. it was, wasn't like oh i'm an, i'm annoyed you here cuz this thing's face kind of sort of stayed kind of stale it didn't really make really that many facial expressions yeah, well, I'm always curious about that grunt because I was talking about this on a Friday night show uh, with my guest, and we were talking about it. You know, when these things grunt at you, um, I don't think that's meant to be aggressive. Again, it's my own opinion. Take it with a grain of salt. But in a lot of situations, I don't think. I know when you hear a grunt, it kind of sounds like you know when you hear a human grunt, it almost sounds like they're irritated. I think it's different with these things. I think when they grunt, they're acknowledging you're there. And you see them, you know, you see each other, and it's just their way of acknowledging. Because almost every, I can't think of one situation where someone's talked about the same grunting at them, and then they were aggressive afterwards. They always seem to walk off afterwards. It's very strange. I, I, would, I, I would have to agree with you uh, on that, because I, I remember you saying one thing, is like, if they growl, it's almost like, like they're doing it because they're scared. Or something. I I think it's kind of in part with that. Like when they growl, they're they're like, "What what is this thing here? I I, I don't know exactly what it is, but whatever it is, I want it out." Or it's like, "Hey, I don't know what you are, but no, I'm here." I, but I think the grunt is, "Oh, this this is nothing really gonna bother me. I, I'm here. I know you're here, and that's it." Yeah, and again, it's speculation, but it's it's interesting, especially when you can line up encounters of people retelling their encounters, and you know they they talk about the grunts, and I, in in a lot of situations, I think hunters view that grunt as aggressive, and I don't think it's meant to be aggressive. Um, if you would, would you describe kind of the face, kind of go into details on what you saw? I mean, I mean, gosh, you were so close. It it was 
kind of a mix between human and uh, I'd say probably a, a gorilla, but it was more, I guess, more gorilla-ish than uh, I say a, a human face. It was. It's kind of had a kind of broad forehead. I I forget. I remember uh, they did a. It was a reconstruction of one, and I think it was called uh, Paranthropus. I think it's called. They topped a skull off. They had supersized a. Oh, what what were they called? They were a type of caveman, but Neanderthal. It, they said they upsized the body to Paranthropus skull on it. It kind of was more monkey, but it had human traits to it. It was wasn't as just primitive as a more gorilla-like face. It, its mouth was f- fair, fairly wide, not overly wide. It had like a pretty good good size mouth on it. Its its nose was definitely uh, it was a, like a human nose, but it was more kind of flattened flattened back like you could kind of see up the nostrils but it was kind of, you it also kind of couldn't it was like kind of i guess semi hooded i guess would be the word it literally looked like a mix mix mash if you mixed oh a an ape nose with a human nose you kind of get this kind of odd but it didn't look out of place on this thing it looked it looked for what it was normal it, it didn't look odd i guess would be the word yeah and you mentioned it's uh facial expressions didn't change very much throughout the encounter correct yeah it was it just kind of just kind of blatantly stared at me and kind of it, it moved its, its lips kind of back and forth like whenever someone's thinking they kind of like they kind of like mush like one side of their mouth up and the other one kind of goes back and forth they're like someone swishing their mouth back and forth but Nothing's actually in there. Kind of just did that. It didn't really. It didn't bear its teeth, and then it it just pushed pushed its. I don't know what the pushing its upper lip up with its bottom lip meant. I, I have to this day, I have no idea what that could possibly mean. Yeah, it's hard to say. It's really hard to say. Strange. It came up and tapped you on the chest three times. Yeah, three. It wasn't firm. It wasn't it was firm, but wasn't too soft or hard. Like it was, it's basically like, hey, I, I'm I'm here. As as if you know, it thought I couldn't see it. I I guess maybe, I since I I didn't move at all. It, I guess maybe it was kind of checking out. Like I guess I wouldn't say this is probably doing, but it's kind of like, uh, you okay? I, I wouldn't say it, that's what it was doing. It was just kind of right. like. It wasn't aggressive, though. It wasn't like a guy coming up and sticking his fingers in your chest or anything like that. No, it was just kind of like, hey, it was, it was someone like went up to you and just like, hey, you know, you okay? But more, more, a little bit more firm, almost like it's like, yeah, I'm, I'm here, just so just to let you know in case you didn't know, I'm here. Did, did it smell? Know. Did it smell up close what you were smelling prior to seeing it? It it did smell. Um, Pretty pretty much the same, but it's almost as 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 it went on, it, the smell kind of kind of dropped off. It was getting, even though it was right in front of me, the smell was wasn't as quite as strong. Almost like I, I, the glands I've heard they they have. It's almost like, it, and if they, I think they said they do it like when humans around or like they're afraid or something, they excrete it. And it's almost like, oh well, this this is I don't I don't need to guess do this anymore, and the kind of smell it was still there, but it was I gotcha yeah, it was less as prominent, and but that also could have been the one that I had thought was also behind me that was kind of like kind of communicating with may have been also closer to me, and that's why closer than I thought. And that's why the smell earlier had been stronger as they were walking through the woods, I guess. Oh, I got you. And so that's why you thought there was one behind you, because you smelled that smell walking into this thing. 
and and it also seemed to like when it looked over it looked like it was looking at something behind me and it when it it kind of went it it kind of was looked like it was directed at something it wasn't just doing it to do it oh i got you interesting did you hear anything behind you uh, at the time I, i i didn't at all i i heard absolutely nothing because the path, there was a path I was walking on, and it's it's just a dirt path, and I hadn't heard anything come come out the woods. I hadn't heard anything. I just heard this. I, I heard the walking, the brush. It died off, and then it it presented itself. Yeah, usually where there's one of these things, there's always another one nearby. Um, I'm curious, when it walked up, were you able to see any sexual organs? Were you able to tell if it was male or female? I did not see a breast on its chest, so I I would assume it was it was male. But at the whole time, I didn't look down. I was looking this thing, kind of right right in the neck, seeing the chest and head, kind of locked there. I I didn't look down or. Yeah, and that's understandable. Anything. Yeah, and that's understandable. I mean, you're kind of it's that moment of shock, fear, and surprise. You know what I mean? And so you, exactly. it's interesting because most people in those type of encounters, uh, they'll go into a lot of details about like the nose or the chest. It's, you, you know, and, and it's, everything else is kind of fuzzy because they were so focused in on that, you know, and I, I think it's something in our brain that does that. I think you were smart not to really do anything, you know, to turn it into a bad situation. That That's a really fascinating encounter. Uh, I wanted to ask you, what do you, what do you think that they are? What do you think that these creatures are? If someone were to ask you, I've I was along the line of I've heard oh they're primates, they're rela hominid. I personally believe they're they're the gray area. They are right in the middle between apes and humans. If you basically a human mated with a gorilla, this is base in supersized it. This is basically what it would be. It would be that gray line between truly human and truly an ape. Yeah, and I and I think traditionally that's how people have described this thing. Somewhere between an ape and a man or a monkey and a man. You know, they called it the wild man, the monkey man, uh, the devil monkey. Uh, the, you know, natives had all kinds of names for them before we called it Sasquatch and Bigfoot here in the United States. But I, I would tend to agree with you. That's how most people describe it somewhere in between a, an ape, a non-human primate, and a human. And that's basically what I saw. Uh, fascinating. Let me ask you, Did you have you ever been back to that property? Or have you ever gone back out to that area where this happened? I have not been there uh, since that incident because I, I, had, I hadn't moved up by that time. I had family issues happening. I, I moved back up. I moved up with, with my mom so I could be more with her and my, my little brother. I got you. I got you. Well, it's a fascinating encounter, and thank God it didn't do anything. You know, it's interesting to hear the behavior, because I have heard this behavior before, and not always do they attack. I think this thing had seen you before, and again, this is just my theory. I think this thing had seen you many times before, probably knew who you were, and knew you weren't a threat. You weren't going to do anything. And so there was no sense in attacking you. But in the same breath, some of these creatures, that's irrelevant. They will attack you. And some of these creatures are, for lack of a better term, they're just, they're cool. They're relaxed. Um, and I've heard encounters like that where they just kind of get up and leave. And they're they're not aggressive. They're not, you know, so it's really hit and miss. But I really appreciate sharing it because it helps with trying to lay out behavior with these things. Trying to understand the behavior of what they do and why they do what they do. You know what I mean? Yeah, and I also uh, I I had heard of one one thing uh, you had said, and it kind of when I heard it, it kind of stuck with me, and kind of I guess made me more afraid and think back of this. You said I said, do I think they eat people or kill people? Absolutely, and I wanted to know, do you think it's maybe more secluded to the the more chimp-like ones and the, I guess, more baboon-like ones than it is the more Neanderthal and kind of Patty Patterson Sasquatch? Do you think they're they're the ones that primarily do that, or do you think they all do that? 
Yeah, that's a good question. You know, anything I say is really speculation because I, I don't know. The short answer is I really don't know. Um, it, if one looks more human-like, because I do get those reports of them looking more human-like, more than an ape. Um, and they do generally, they are not quite as, I don't get quite as many aggressive reports from those or from the ones that look more like Patty. Generally speaking, I get less aggressive reports than I do when people start describing, kind of like down in the South, they describe more of a chimpanzee-looking creature. They're not as big, and they are, they're absolutely more aggressive. I think they all kill, to be honest with you. And I think that um, it really, I think it's more of a case-by-case basis. I think that it depends on the individual and depends on that particular individual. Because there's a lot of cases where these things just get up and walk off and just leave. Don't approach you, don't do anything. And then there's other cases where they will charge you and come for you. I've had many reports like that on the air. And I, I also recalled you saying uh, this lady had an encounter and she heard like, I think her, you said her, her daughter had heard like people mumbling out there and you said, I guess you, I think you said to her, uh, if you hear someone like it's people mumbling outside, you're probably okay. But if it sounds like there's two chimps like muttering about outside, you you want to be careful. And I I, I could just kind of I guess picture that if if I was if that was the case, I I probably would not be here right now. Yeah, it's interesting you bring that up. Let me see if I have a little bit of that. This is from the Sierra Sounds, Ron Moorhead. And for new listeners, that's kind of some of the monkey chatter we talk about. Let me see what else I got here. Let's take a listen to this one. But I think any chatter outside your window is bad for business. Um, you know, I, I I would advise someone to be very careful. They hear any chatter. And this is more of, I guess, what we call the monkey chatter. I know within the Sierra Sounds collection, there there's a thing called the samurai chatter. And that sounds more like a language to me. It sounds like they're talking back and forth. Um, this just sounds more like a wild animal. Let's take a listen to the last one here. Okay. Well, that's about the most disturbing thing I've ever heard. Um, <laughs> you know, Kyle, with when I say, you know, if you hear mumbling outside, you know, it's probably these. A lot of that's just speculation. That's just me guessing. And it's no more than that because I, I don't know. I do think, I believe that the ones that do look more human-like, you'll get more of that samurai chatter. It sounds more like a language than you will necessarily with ones that are like this, you know, the, these right here where it's more, it sounds more like a chimpanzee or two monkeys talking back and forth. But they could all do it. You know, they absolutely could all do it. And at the end of the day, I'm just guessing and that's why it's so important for guys like you to come on and share your encounter because we learn behavior. We learn kind of what they do and why they do it. And until we have a body or it's proven, there's really no other way to go about it. But I really appreciate you coming on and, and sharing your encounter and talking about what happened to you. Thank you again. No problem. Thank you for having me. All right. 
All right, all right, all right. <laughs> I want to give a shout out to uh, Rob Nichols from the UK, uh, Grant Pound Road, Cornwall. And uh, your daughter sent me a message, said you listen every week. And thank you so much for listening. Ask me if I would do a shout out. Uh, thank you, Rob. Got a lot of listeners out there in the UK. Always kind of surprises me a little bit. So shout out to everyone in the UK. Have a drink on me or tea, especially you, Rob. Thank you again for listening. And I also want to thank uh, the sponsor of the show, uh, My Bookie. You know, having a sponsor helps fund other things like an app. Um, none of this stuff just magically happens. And, I, you know, My Bookie's been a great sponsor. They've really supported the show and showed a lot of interest in the show. Uh, which is strange for a gambling site to be interested in Bigfoot, but they love the show. So hopefully we can go out and show them some love. And at some point, the sponsorship with MyBookie will end, but I will definitely continue to use their services. I'm ahead of the game. I've I've won more money off that site than I've actually lost. I've actually done pretty well. Uh, They have in-game betting, live betting. Uh, You can bet on racing. You can bet on the UFC. You can bet on the... I don't think there's anything you can't bet on that site. Um, And it's a pretty cool site. So if you get a chance, check it out. Join now and MyBookie will match your deposit dollar for dollar, uh, which is kind of cool. So if you throw 100 bucks in, they'll give you another 100 bucks. Uh, use promo code CHRONICLES to activate that offer. Visit MyBookie online today. That's MyBookie. And don't forget to use the promo code CHRONICLES when creating your account to claim the bonus. You play, you win, you get paid. And I was actually seeing on the site they have an app. Uh, I've been just going to uh, MyBookie.ag and placing my bets there. So it's kind of cool they have an app. So thank you to my bookie for sponsoring the show. And let's get back into it tonight. I want to welcome Ryan to the show. Ryan, thanks for being here. Thanks so much, Wes. Thanks for having me, man. Yeah, well, I really appreciate you being here. And I know you're out there in New York. Um, and you had a very strange encounter. Um, and I'd like to say I've never heard this before. I've probably heard this type of thing more times than I'd like to admit. Uh, but I'll give you the stage to kind of tell us what you were out doing and walk us into what happened. Okay. Yeah. Thanks so much, Wes. Yeah. It's a quiet night in Brooklyn tonight, man. I just fed the dog and cat and, uh, everybody's happy. But yeah, so I basically, I wanted to get out of the city and, uh, take my dog, uh, into the woods for five days. I mean, I'd have to say, uh, I was inspired somewhat by, um, you know, listening to your show and a few things people, I, I remember something that stood out that people were saying that, you know, you don't have to go too far out into the city or I go too far out to find these things, you know? And, uh, and I was like, wow, you, you know, is, I kind of wanted to test this theory a little bit. And I had heard rumors that, you know, there had been sightings in Kingston, New York, uh, in upstate New York. And so, um, you know, and I, it wasn't the main, re- the main reason for me going out wasn't like, Oh, I'm going to go out and find Bigfoot. Like, you know, and the, the, the number one reason was I was like, you know, I want to get out of the city, take my dog is the summer, you know, it was June or July. Yeah. I think it was, and I think this happened in July and I just wanted to get out of the city and, and, uh, take my dog out and, uh, and just, you know, spend, you know, five days in the woods with my dog and, uh, and be alone with my brain for five days, you know? Um, so I packed up, so I didn't have a car at this time. I have a car now, but at this time I didn't have a car. I just bought a bunch of like food and gear and, uh, I loaded, I had paneers on my bike, you know, and a rack on the back of my bike. So I just loaded up, I took my hiking pack, my backpack, you know, or, um, my, um, you know, my sleeping bag, all my gear and just, uh, strapped it to the back of my bike. And, and then I have a basket on the front. I have a little 20 pound dog. That's a terrier dachshund mix uh, named Sophie. <clears throat> so I put her in the front basket of the bike and I probably looked like a, you know, <laughs> I probably looked like a crazy person biking <laughs> yeah. out of, you know, Brooklyn into Manhattan to right. Grand Central Station, <laughs> you know, like, a, but it, I, I know that I was like a scene, you know, my big, you know, uh, mountain bike with all of my gear and my dog, but, um, I was a spectacle for sure. Um, but so what I did was I took uh, the train from uh, Grand Central and I went two hours north to Wasaic uh, to the last stop. And I won't say what park I was in, but um, it's it's 20, I believe it's 20, around 2,800 uh, 2, acres uh, where I went. And so I went two hours north and uh, from there I biked <clears throat> another 10 miles 
and uh, I won't say which direction, but I biked another 10 miles and took me to a park. And uh, it was like this, you know, I mean, it was beautiful. The weather was amazing. It was like, it was sunny. Uh, it, when it was like, you know, breezy, light breeze. And for the, the whole five days, it was like that. The weather was perfect. And it was a pretty arduous bike ride to get there. It was pretty much straight up. Some parts I had to like walk with all the gear. I had 50 pounds of gear in my dog. So it was like some points I had to walk up my bike up these hills because it was just straight up. Um, but that eventually led me into 10 miles uh, uh, later. It had led me into this. It turned into a dirt road and, and went into this like kind of a, into a, a nice park reserve area or a, a natural park. <clears throat> and um and as I'm going in, uh, as I was telling you, I saw um, these no pet signs. And I'm like, what? I'm like, are you serious? I'm like out in the middle of nowhere and there's these no pet signs. And so I got a little nervous about that. And um, I came upon this lady who was walking three dogs. And I'm like, you know, what's up with these no pet signs? Is this for real? Like you have three dogs here, obviously. And she was just like, oh, yeah, don't pay attention to that. Uh, it's like no big deal. And um <clears throat> And this is like a little foreshadowing, but she said, you know, and, it's, it, and we, we chatted a little bit. We had some small talk, but she ended up saying, uh, you know, it's really funny. This is a really beautiful park, but nobody ever comes here. And so, you know, that kind of like stayed in the back of my mind. And so I, I biked on with the dog and I found a field. I had so much gear, you know, I had my bike, I had all this heavy gear. So my plan was to find a field, like I found a field and set up my camp. And then I would spend the next five days like doing day hikes. And so I found this like nice grassy area with some shade and uh, set up my camp. And um, <clears throat> what happened was, and I didn't tell you this in our, our original phone call, but what happened was is I forgot to bring coffee. I didn't bring any coffee. So the first day and a half was spent me laying on the ground. Uh, and anybody that knows this that doesn't have, that drinks a lot of coffee that doesn't have caffeine is you have like an insane like, uh, withdrawal from like not having caffeine. Oh, yeah. So I spent the first day and a half basically laid out on the ground next to my tent, you know, trying to like uh, take naps and like wear off this caffeine headache I was having. The next three days was spent, uh, my dog and I were doing basically six mile, you know, six to seven mile hikes, just doing day hikes. Um, but, you know, and that's not that long for a day hike, but this area I was in was extremely rocky. Uh, the, the forest was really dense. Um, and this time I told you on the phone call, like at this time it was, I mean, it was literally raining caterpillars. I couldn't put my elbow down or step somewhere where I wasn't squishing a cat. I mean, there were caterpillar, it was raining caterpillars and there was centipede, or either millipede or centipede. I think it was millipedes, there were millipedes everywhere. It was just beautiful. The weather was gorgeous. But the, uh, so the first three days, uh, we were doing six to seven mile hikes. It was, uh, it, you know, it was like kind of like rainforest. It was beautiful. Um, and along these hikes, I, I was finding like these really big piles of like hairy scat uh, on the rocks. And I was just like, this, this, this is like the weirdest poop I've ever seen in my life. Cause it was so thick. It was almost like it was a hairball. It was so thick. And, you know, I'm like, Oh, okay. Like, I don't know what that is. That could be from anything. Um, and so on this one particular hike, I hiked deeper in and we were probably like three and a half to four mile mark. And I was, you know, going by my time. Uh, on my clock, like how far uh, to, to gauge my distance. And I get to one point where we get into this super dense uh, forested area. And there are these uh, two, two and a half inch diameter, uh, you know, uh, skinny trees going up on either side of this path. And about, you know, you know, eight to 11 feet up, you know, there are these like, they're, they're branch twists uh, on, on either side of the path. Like it, it was almost like a gate almost. And there were no other trees like that. It was just on this path at this point. And also at this point, I started getting the feeling like I was being watched. Like I felt like it felt heavy. Like, you know, when you get that heavy feeling and, and I, and I, I kind of looked, I looked at Sophie and I was like, all right, like, I think this is a good point to turn around. You know, it's a little early. It was probably like three thirty four. I was like, it's a little early to turn around, but I think this is a good place to turn around because I, I'm feeling a little weird in this area. And so we turn around, we hike back <clears throat> and, uh, you know, each night uh, I would get back to camp, like around six, would bathe in the Creek close by and then, uh, cook dinner. And then, you know, my dog and I, we'd go to sleep. The dog was sleeping in the tent with me. So on the third night, um, I was planning on staying there five days, 
so on the third night, um, at around 12:30 at night, um, I wake up at 12:30 at night, and my dog is laying in the tent with me, and she's growling, and I look at her, and she's growling. And now she's growling under her breath, and she's like shaking, she's convulsing, like uncontrollably. And I'm like, what is going on? And the forest was alive. Like the forest was so loud with birds, with insects. Like at night, it was just like a cacophony of like, you know, the, the forest was, was bumping. I, and I'm looking at Sophie and then all of a sudden the forest just goes completely like dead silent. You know, just how I've heard other people have said, it goes completely silent. Like you could hear a pin drop. And I'm like, I'm like, oh man. Like, and my heart starts to sink a little bit and I'm laying there you know, I don't have any weapons or anything, it's just me and my dog. And I hear footsteps coming towards the tent. And so I'm like, oh, great. And so I'm, I'm, my dog's, as my dog's growling and shaking, I'm, I gently like put my hand on her nose and I'm like, Sophie, I'm like, just don't, I'm like whispering to her, I'm like, don't bark, man. I was like, please don't bark. And so, and cause I, I was, I was actually more afraid for her than for me. You know, like I, I was like the worst thing that could happen to me is watching something bad happen to my dog. Like yeah, I was more afraid same for way. her than for myself. Yeah. You I'm know? the same like, way. I really was. It was. Yeah, exactly. So I was like, I can't imagine anything bad happening to her. But, um, <clears throat> so I basically am in like, at this point in a dry sweat and I am so like, I'm so afraid. Like I've never been this afraid in my life, like in survival mode super afraid and i feel like at this point like you either like two things either happen you either have a freak out and you go hysterical or there's this kind of like point where you like go go beyond the fear and you come to this kind of vulnerable like you give into it and and that's what i did i i didn't you know i i just i laid there and i was like you know what i'm completely vulnerable whatever's going to happen is going to happen and and, and I was like, and I'm okay with it. And I became extremely calm. And then, um, and at that point I said, I said, and I also asked God to put a protective shield over my tent right now, like oh, pr- to protect me, you know, I asked for protection, like a protection force field. I kind of visualized it. I hear the footsteps come up and it's like, it sounds like eight or 10 feet from my tent and I can hear breathing. And this breathing man was like, it's like hearing a set of lungs inside of a 50 gallon drum. It's like there's the capacity of the chest was, was bananas. I was like, there's, you know, I, I never heard something breathe like this before. And then all of a sudden it goes, it lets out a, a gorilla like sound. And it was like, <laughs> like really fast. It had like those in breaths. So like, that's what was really bizarre to me. Cause I had never, like, I was like, man, I don't think that's a bear, man. Like, I don't think a bear makes that sound. But at this point, also, I didn't feel like it was threat. I, I didn't feel threatened, like actually hearing it. Like, and then the well, the other weird thing that happens also is that you know I'm in my tent with my rain fly in my tent, so I can't see out of the screen. But the other weird thing that happened was I was in survival mode, and I had never experienced this before. But I couldn't see it. But my it was like my auditory senses were so sharp, and they they started to like kind of 3d map it in my head. So it was like mapping out these legs and this giant chest. And that's about as far as it went up, you know, in my mind, this thing, it comes in and it happened really quick. It came in and made that sound. And then like the Doppler effect, it just went <laughs> and it got quieter as it like went off in the distance. But the wild thing was, is that I never heard its feet. I heard it walk into the camp, but I didn't, it's like it went into stealth mode and it, 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 I didn't hear its footsteps as it ran off at all. And then what was wild, man, is the, the forest slowly, it's like the level of the forest started to like slowly come back up and the sounds of the forest started to replace, it, like started to come back alive again with all the insect and bird sounds. And then off in the distance, I could hear, and, and prior to this, I had heard owl sounds. I didn't mention this, but a couple nights before, I'd heard real owls. Like, I heard owl sounds, and they're beautiful. And on this night that this happened, I heard one make an owl, like a fake owl sound. And then I heard another one with a different voice, or, you know, a different sounding voice or a different pitch, make another fake owl sound back. Like, there was a communication going on. And then as I, as I laid there in my tent, 
I'm staring at the roof of my tent and this is, this is where it got really weird. Like, uh, you know, that was, and I'm like, and I'm laying there and I'm like, okay, like this is all stuff I've heard on, you know, the Chronicles show. Like, this is all real, man. I was like, this is wild. Be- and I wasn't expecting any of this to happen. You know, I, I didn't, I, I was like, Oh, it'd be cool to maybe experience something like that. But I, I never in a million years was expecting like this all to be like real or for it to happen on me on my trip, you know? Um, and then the, the other thing that happened was that was super bizarre <clears throat> is that this light started, this light appeared like about a quarter size above my head and I'm staring at the roof. This happens at the roof of my tent. I'm looking at it and, and I'm like, am I really seeing this? And it starts to, to spiral and it's in the shape of a yin yang. It's, it's, if you can picture the colors, like a, like a dirty yellow with brown and orange in it where like the darkest part of yin yang was like a, like a darker yellow, you know, brown, orangish color. And then the lightest part was lighter than that. And it was a perfect swirl, like a yin yang. And it started, it was spinning, but it didn't have the, the circles in it. You know, it's, it was like a yin yang minus the circle that just had the swoosh in the middle and it started spinning. And then, and I'm like looking at this thing and I'm like, what the hell is that? And then the other weird thing that happens is, is the portal starts to fade out or um, the, the shape starts to fade out. And then it's like an index card. It's almost like, it, it's like, fu- it like when future, it was like a future movie where like a screen is floating in front of somebody and they can like touch the screen and do things, but it's like floating in the air. This is what it looked like. And then there was a square like index card size thing that flashes and it, shows an illustration of a UFO downloading into a, a black flashing white and black dot and it downloads in this dot. And so I'm like, what in the hell was that? And so I'm laying there and I, and, and my, my brain responds to it. Like you just received a download, like automatically it was like, you just received a download. And I was like, I don't know what that means, but I, I was like, okay, sure. You know, and so, um, and I didn't tell you this in the phone call, but so all this happens, you know, and this is all really weird stuff. You know, it's weird for me to even talk about. And I feel like I'm one of the most normal people I know, even though I'm an artist, I feel like I'm a pretty normal person. So after all this happens, the other funny thing that happened to me that I didn't tell you about in our previous phone call, Wes, just to put icing on the cake was I had, this is a really dumb move, but I had all of my food and I had Sophie's dog, dry dog food in a, in a, a Ziploc bag underneath my rain fly. And all of a sudden, after all this happens, like within like a couple of minutes, you know, and it's basically like my arm is almost on top of the dog. Like it's under the rain fly, but it's like my arm is like right next to it. And something pulls the dog food out from underneath the tent and here gets pulled out from underneath the tent. And I'm like, Oh shit. And I'm like, I'm like, oh God, I'm like, it's back. And I hear, <laughs> I hear the bag tear open and I hear, <laughs> and then, and then I hear it pull out one of my paneers, one of my biking bags, and it starts rifling through my, my paneer bag. And I hear it eating some more. And I'm like, okay, I'm pretty sure that's a raccoon. And so, and then I hear it, I hear it lapping up Sophie's water out of her water dish. And so in the morning when I wake up, I, uh, I, uh, see the dog food bags, you know, splayed out with dog food on the ground. And there's like a bread, there's bread, like, uh, you know, all over. I'm like, Oh yeah, I must've been really thirsty. Cause it just ate like half a loaf of bread and, and dry dog food. But on top of the, uh, all the, that was some comic relief on top of the, uh, the, other, all the other wild stuff that happened. Yeah, that all the weird stuff. Yeah, I hear you. Yeah, and it's uncom- <laughs> yeah. you know it's uncomfortable for people to hear what you're talking about. But I've heard, believe me, I've heard. I mean, this is a walk in the park compared to some of the things I've heard off the air. And there's something too. The one part that really fascinates me about your encounter is a light, because I had and I've talked about them many times. And I'm hoping one of the brothers will come back to the show. There's other things going on in their life to where. That's the reason why they haven't come back on. And I talk about the two brothers that, you know, saw the woman in white and they started out. You hear them in the intro of the show. You hear the two guys talk. One of them says, grab a gun, grab a gun, grab a gun. And right. the other brother is the first brother that talks. I believe it's Mick where he says he saw this black thing go from left to right. And he thought he was going to die out there. Well, I had spent months with these guys talking to these guys and they were convinced. They even sent me pictures 
And if you look at the pictures, they look like gorillas in the brush. I mean, they got some good pictures. Uh, But what's interesting is I got to talking to them. They didn't really want to share the the strange, the weird things that were going on. Um, And I'm not really sure why, but when we started really talking, one of the things they said that made me think of your encounter, he had mentioned, actually both brothers said, he told me this on two separate occasions. They weren't together when they told me this. Um, they had seen these these balls of light spinning, almost like the mm-hmm. yin yang you're talking about. And he said they would spin, right. and they were little balls of light, and they would spin. And uh, both brothers, I think one of the brothers used a term. He said they looked like the Sasquatch were in a trance, like the light would light them up. You know, it would be a real soft ambient light around the Sasquatch, and the Sasquatch looked like it was in a trance. You know, there's a there's a many things strange that those guys told me I haven't even talked about on the air. But that's fascinating that you saw that. You know, and I saw a ball of light. I can't tell you what it is. But this right. type of encounter is very uncomfortable for a lot of inve- investigators to talk about or a lot of Bigfoot researchers to talk about because, and I use researcher in a very loose term, um, they will say, well, Sasquatch is nothing more than an ape. So they'll pass off all this other you know, like your encounter or the brother's encounter, they would pass all that off as, and it doesn't do the, the you got to listen to everyone. <laughs> even Dr. Bennernagel, like who was like, it's mumbo jumbo or something. Yeah. Like it's mumbo jumbo. And it's like, you know, I even had, yeah. um, a Dr. Bennernagel who was actually a real scientist. You know, he told me the complete opposite. He said, no, have them on the show, have the weird stuff on the show until you find answers to what this thing is. You got to hear everyone out. And and your encounter, there's a lot of little things to your encounter that I know to be true just because of other people I've talked to. This is a why. I mean, it sounds probably sounds strange to the audience, but to me, this is normal. I've heard things way stranger than this. This is nothing. Yeah. Um, And it concerns me a little bit. It really concerns me on on what it is we're chasing. Wait till uh, episode 500 when Les Stroud opens up. You'll be shocked right. a lot of, you know, you and I have talked about it off the air, but a lot of people are going to be yeah. shocked on what he had to say. Well, what do you think the light yeah. was? What was your personal opinion on what that light was? Uh, well, yeah, I mean, <clears throat> uh, yeah, I mean, it, well, the, the other thing, uh, well, that I talked to you about on the phone was, uh, you know, I, I kind of felt like I needed some answers and, um, and I didn't know who to talk to about this. You know, I, I was, I, I was like, who do, who, like, what is going on? Like, how do I, who do I talk to about this? I had been talking to this lady. She's world renowned, actually. She's a, um, she's a spiritual advisor. And, uh, at the end, of, I, the reason why I started talking to her was because I, I had been going through some emotional stuff because at the end of 2016, I had, uh, my, my best friend and my mom pass away within a month of each other. And so I was going through some hard stuff and, and I had been seeing weird things, lights in the sky, like all this stuff that I was like, okay, like I need somebody to talk to and I can't talk to, you know, like a psychologist about this. I didn't feel like I could. And so I had done my research and I had found this renowned woman who I watched on interviews and she seemed very legit. And so I, um, I called her and obviously we didn't talk about this encounter on the first time we talked or the first time I talked to her. It was probably like the third time I had talked to her on the phone. I, I, I brought it up to her and she was super fascinated by it. And um, this particular woman that I talked to, you know, she's her, her title is like a psychic healer. But I, and I know some people will like have a hard time with that. But it's, you know, I mean, we, it's been scientifically proven that we're all 100 percent energy, you know, and like we, we are energy, you know. And like, so the work she does is basically like all our organs, everything inside of us is energy. So like she works with that to like help heal people. It's like her main focus. But I had, uh, I had over our phone conversation, I I told her what had happened and she, she uses what she calls guides to, um, to, uh, she has spiritual spirit guides basically that, that help instruct her, tell her what's going on. So she's like, let me ask my guides about what happened to you. And I was like, that would be amazing. And so, because this stuff is bizarre, like they're like, you know, you need to go to to these sources to like find out, you have to go to these sources to find out about these things because nobody else is going to tell you about them. 
so um, she asked her guides about it, and she said, well, what they're telling me is basically that, that yin-yang light shape that was, you know, circling above your head was a portal. It, it's some type of portal. And as far as, like, the uh, index card, you know, flash with the, the UFO down, she was like, you basically received a download. You were um, – those – that she was like that download was meant for the Bigfoot in the area. Like that download was meant for them. It had something to do with their migratory path is what she said. She was like, they didn't, they couldn't really say more than that because that was all the information they were giving her that it had the download was, I, she said the reason why I saw it was because I just happened to be camping in that area when these, when these, uh, these, be, these uh, beings were moving through there. Um, is how she explained it to me. And so like yeah. that, you know, I mean, you know, I was like, okay, por- like portals and downloads, like a migratory path. Like I was like, wow. Like I, uh, I was, you know, I was like, okay, like that, that at least explains a little bit, you know, uh, of what, of what it was about. Yeah. So, like that gave me a little bit of comfort, you know? Yeah. And um, I would, I would be careful with spirit there. mediums. I understand what you're talking about. I understand why you went to the woman. Yeah. Um, I think sometimes, and this is my own personal opinion. I'm gonna sound like a dick saying it, but no, um, no not at all. I man, think some all. of them are either uh, tricksters, and they're it's nonsense. And sometimes when they do speak, it's in half truths, and it makes you wonder who are they speaking to? Who who are these spirit guides she's speaking to? That's what I'd like to know. Yeah. Um, and so yeah. you got to be careful sometimes talking to them. But you know, I you know, I probably shouldn't even have said that, but. Um, I, I'm just leery <laughs> okay. sometimes of, of people like that. Yeah, you know, I'm leery of, uh, of sure. priests, too, or people who claim to be holy right. men. I'm very leery of them. But I understand why you went to them, because, I mean, who else would you talk to about this? It's very odd. It's very strange. And she could have been 100% right. I don't know. You know, I'm, I'm not arrogant right. enough to sit back and go, wow, she was wrong, because I don't know. Yeah. You know, it sure is yeah. odd when people run into Sasquatch Generally speaking, in the same areas, they'll run into these weird lights that no one can explain. I just had a gentleman on Friday. He was talking about the weird lights, and he said when this light showed up, everything went quiet. The whole forest went like it's like someone flipped a switch, turned everything off, and there was no sound. Right. And this light shows up. So I hope it's not some form of deception, you know what I mean, as far as... I'm just leery sometimes, you know, sometimes with these uh, Sasquatch, I've heard so many strange stories, man. I I won't bore you with them, but um, it's odd because I look into the alien, the the whole alien phenomenon that's going on, and you'll find a lot of strange correlations between the two. You know, it's like you, you hear some of these people, you can call them crazies or whack jobs or whatever. They'll come back and say, well, you know, Sasquatch, they... They want us to be more, show more brotherly love towards each other and save the planet. Sounds like a great message. Sure, funny, the aliens have the same message if you hear people who talk about that. So it makes you wonder a little bit about what's going on here. Are we all, is it all kind of presenting itself in different methods or different forms? You know, is it deception? I'm just leery of stuff like that. I'm not saying your encounter is not true because I believe you 100%. I'm just, a little worried about what it might have actually been. You know what I mean? Right. Right. Sorry, man. Yeah, I probably I mean, came across no, like a complete no, no, dick no, right not there. At all. No, 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 not at all. I mean, it's, it's like, you know, I mean, if, if you're dealing with stuff that seems really out there that, that, okay, I, I'm dealing with a factual, like what I'm saying happened is, is a fact like that. I, that, that happened. So when you're dealing with stuff that's like that far out, like you kind of have to go to like some far out people that work with, yeah. you know, a spirit world or energy to find out, to find out about far out stuff. You know, it's hard to argue that, that. that was kind of, yeah. It's hard. That? Yeah. I said, it's hard to argue what you just said. It's hard to argue that, right, you right. know, against that. You're absolutely right. Right. You know, who right. do you go because to? You're not going to go to a doctor or right. a psychologist and be like, Hey man, I saw a flashing yin yang in my tent and a, you know, an index card, you know, and I saw a down, a UFO download and like, they're going to be like, they're going to be like, Hey man, take two of these. Right. (laughs) They're going to medicate you up. Yeah. 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 It's true, man. I mean, I mean, honestly, man, I, I do think like, I, I think like these, these, like these Sasquatch, I think their, their main job, man, is to protect our forest, to be honest, man. I think that if they were benevolent, cuddly teddy bears, man, 
they'd be they'd be mounted on people's walls like bear heads and 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 if they that they weren't nasty every once in a while like you know to protect our forest then we i feel like we'd all be living in deserts by now man because all of our forests would be cut down probably so i think like maybe their function is to like is to keep people a little afraid and to like keep them out of cutting down all of our forests i mean if you look at our history of like easter island and all these places all these people like they cut down all of their trees you know so i mean to me that could be a major function that they serve you know yeah you could be right you could definitely could be right i wanted would you recount the story of the um i know you and i talked about les stroud he how he had you and i talked about the ufo he had seen and how big it actually was and I, you were telling me about a UFO, a UFO that you saw. Would you mind sharing it? And if you don't want to, it's okay. Sure. No, no, no. I'm totally open to share it. Um, so uh, this was at the end of 2016. It was about I. Um, uh, my folks live in uh, North Carolina, and so I was in North Carolina at the time, and. Uh, I was on uh, a highway one north uh, heading towards Raleigh to pick up uh, at the time she was my fiance and I was on, on my way to pick her up at the airport. And I think her flight was getting in at around 10 30 PM. And so I left the house at around nine 30 because it took an hour to get to the airport. And so I borrowed my stepdad's car and I was driving on highway one north and the this, the radio station was awesome. There was this DJ playing all this old 90s music. It was great. He was playing like Alice in Chains, Smashing Pumpkins. Like it was all this all like throwback 90s alternative music. It was amazing. The night was it was a really nice night. And and and, and hi, anybody familiar with how went North North Carolina, it goes. It's pretty much like a straight line to Raleigh, and it's uh it's all really tall pines. Uh, that that you're basically on a road with tall pines that um hug the road i'm sorry I'm not that's all right dog's doing its job protecting the house <laughs> yeah, exactly and so um so i so i'm heading on highway one north uh highway one north it's a 70 mile an hour highway and uh and i have the windows down it's a really nice night and it's a purple it's like a purple sky speckled with stars. I mean, it's just a, it's a beautiful evening, a beautiful night. And <clears throat> um, up in the sky ahead of me, or, or well, first of all, um, just like classic scenario, my um, radio, the radio is playing crystal clear the whole time. And at a certain point, the radio starts cutting on and off, like static, like cutting on and off, going in and out. And I'm like, oh, that's weird. The radio is playing great the whole time. Now it's acting weird. And then I look up ahead of me, and in the, the night sky, in the purple sky, I see two orbs kind of like dancing next to each other, like one's bobbing up and up, but they're way, way off in the distance, like way off in the distance. And I'm looking at them, and I'm like, that's bizarre, and I'm trying to place what they are, and I'm like, it's definitely not a helicopter. I was like, they're definitely not helicopters, because they're moving so smoothly. And I'm like, oh, man, they're, I was like, there's definitely not airplane, because they're in a fixed position, but they're bobbing up and down next to each other. And so I'm like, well, that'd be crazy if those are UFOs. And I was like, and as soon as I had the thought, I was like, what's even crazy? I was like, what'd be even crazier is if they came a little closer so I could see one. And as soon as I had that thought, man, the right one, the the right, the one on the right, the light, it drops, it starts to drop. And it starts to like, it looks like it's coming closer. And, um, and I'm like, holy cow. And I'm sitting there, man. And, and, and I'm like, is this really happening? And so, you know, I'm going like 70 miles an hour. It's only me and one car in front of me on this highway. And this, as this light starts getting closer, <clears throat> and, and it was like, it was like the time elapsed was like hard to judge because it's basically a spotlight coming, moving at you. And the only thing that's happening is like the aperture of the light, you know, it's like opening, it's just getting a little bigger and like small, you know, fragments, like getting bigger as it comes closer. And so it's kind of hard to judge where it is, you know, in the sky, but it's at my one o'clock at a certain point, you know, as it's getting closer, I'm staring, this is all happening at once. I'm staring at my cell phone on the dashboard and I'm like, 
I'm like, take a video, take a video, take a video. And then I'm like, and as this thing's coming closer, we're going from 70 miles an hour to 60 miles an hour down to 45 miles an hour, 35 miles an hour. Pretty soon, man, we're going five miles an hour. And this thing, this light is at my one o'clock. It was so close. I could have thrown a football at it. And the, so, and I'm, so at this moment, if you can imagine this, I'm on a highway. Okay. I've got all these things going on. I'm staring at this light. I'm trying to pay attention to the car in front of me. So I don't hit the car in front of me. And I'm thinking about grabbing my cell phone and my legs are shaking because I'm, I'm beside myself. I'm, you know, freaking out. I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm nervous. I, you know, I'm all of those things, all those emotions in one. And, and all of a sudden this thing, it turns sideways so that I can see the whole belly of the craft and it's a perfect rectangle. And I would guesstimate that it was two car lengths wide, um, you know, two, two and a half car lengths wide by probably like five car lengths long. And if you can imagine like a shipping container, the whole bottom of this thing looked like a, a, a striations, like a shipping container and it had I- intermittent uh, lights on the bottom of it. And this thing turned sideways. See the whole belly floating rectangle. Okay. Perfect rectangle. It looks like a giant floating piece of like, you know, like in construction when they pour the slabs and you can see the slab, it yeah. looks like this floating slab of, you know, m- this con- shipping container metal. And, um, and it, it, man, it, it hovers across the highway uh, over us over the other lane and and it just it in west this thing looks like it's it looks like it's moving underwater like there's no propulsion system there's no uh i don't even see like a glowing ring around it of anything to show that it had any kind of propulsion system and this thing floated right over the tree line and what's interesting about this area is that it's uh it's in a nuclear there's a nuclear plant to the to my it would be to my right there's a nuclear plant and there's all these signs. And I always get these weird vibes when I drive down this road in a certain area. And there's all these no parking signs along this highway in this certain section. And, uh, yeah, man, this thing just floated effortlessly over the, the tree line on the, you know, on the other side of the road and just out of eyesight. And I'm sitting there and I'm like, I look at my cell phone and I'm like, I just, I was like, I started like, I, I was just like hitting my forehead. Like I just, lost the best Instagram video of my life and I didn't take, it. <laughs> you know, and yeah. I started kicking myself that I didn't, I was so transfixed and it all happened so fast. And then what happened next was we, the, myself and the car in front of me started to speed up and I had to exit in like the next 20 or 30 feet. I had to take my, take the exit to uh, the quick pass and the car in front of me just started flashing their lights vigorously. And I just started flashing my lights vigorously back at them as I started to exit. And, you know, a lot of my friends, like, tease me and give me a hard time. Our friends that I told the, about, told the story to say, man, I can't believe you didn't, like, pull over and talk to them and this and that. And I was just like, man, I was so freaked out. Like, I couldn't get out. I was like, I was beside myself at that moment. And I felt like us flashing our lights back and forth was enough, you know, because we had yeah, just shared that, experience, that wild experience together, you know. Yeah, and it is terrifying. Mm. I mean, it is a strange, strange experience. It's like I was telling you before uh, we went on the air, and I, I mean, I'll – it's coming up on episode 500. Um, I had asked Les Stroud what was the strangest thing he had seen, and he talked about this UFO being the size of a mall, just hovering. Oh yeah. Now here's a guy oh, that yeah. he, he what he does for a living is he films. He's got like a million cameras, and he films. Then he goes, Wes, I sat and watched this thing for five minutes. You think I'd pick up a camera and film it? Never happened. And so I understand, you know, having your thing on the dash. I think that's your normal human response is you're in such shock and awe. Did it make any noise or anything as it came over the top of you? None. Zero. It was so quiet. It didn't make any noise. That's what was so beautiful about it. The the movement, I mean, the movement and the, it it was, I mean, it was definitely an ants, you know, you you could say either way, pro-gravity or anti-gravity. Uh, it was definitely that kind of technology, you know, I, I felt like that for sure. Um, and I'm not saying that I saw, you know, something from outer space. I mean, it could be military. It could be you know, right. military yeah. technology. Like, I don't know, you know, because I didn't see like little men or, you know, you know, little gray men or anything. I, I'm just saying that what I can sit here and tell you as a fact is that I saw this 
you know, that close to me float across the sky as a fact, you know? That's terrifying. Um, man. And I'm not saying that. Yeah, it's really wild. Yeah, it's really bizarre. You're right. It could have been our military. It could have been. But then, that, you know, you, if you drill down on that, where did they get that technology? Where did they come up with that? Yeah. And, Absolutely. you know, so it really makes you wonder. Uh, that's fascinating, man. I'm really glad you shared that. I, I love UFO encounters. I, I think they're fascinating. I think they're more fascinating oh, than yeah. Bigfoot encounters by every means. But, it, you know, it makes you worry a little bit, too. Is it all connected? You know, it's um, right. like when you talk about the lights, you know, that light appearing above you. Um, that's not the first time I've heard that. I've heard it many, many times yeah. um, by very credible yeah. people. And most of the time they won't come on the air and talk about it. I mean, I've probably heard more encounters off the air than people have heard, actually heard me produce and put out for the public. I guarantee I've heard more off the air. And so it really makes you kind of worry a little bit and wonder a little bit, what's going on here? What What's really going on in this world? Um, you know, they, yeah. they talk about portals and lights and, you know, who knows? Who knows what it is? But yeah. I really appreciate coming on, man, and sharing the uh, the Bigfoot encounter I think is fascinating, especially the light part. Like I said, I'd like to be shocked and go, oh, my God, I've never heard such of a thing. But I've heard it many times. So, um, And then the UFO thing, man. Thank you so much for coming on and and sharing it and representing New York out there, New Yorkers. Yeah, yeah, man. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely, man. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the other thing, you know, I've heard like, you know, uh, like, you know, Bigfoot might, like I've heard in other interviews, I've heard people say, you know, like Bigfoot supposedly is like the low maintenance, you know, uh, the, the low maintenance extraterrestrial that like can be dropped off on any planet, man. So you never know. You yeah, know, you never know. Kind of I heard a doctor one you know, time. Like they're, they're like the, they're like the low maintenance badasses that can be dropped off anywhere and survive, you know? Well, um, what's interesting, know, man. I'll see if I can't dig it up. Um, I was watching an interview with a guy who claimed to have worked on alien bodies and alien ships and, he was asked, um, I think it's Dr. Emery. I'll have to look it up. But anyway, he was asked. Oh, what, yeah. what I, the, I know who you're talking about. Yeah. He was interviews. Yeah, he said, yeah. Well, what, what was the alien body? And he said, honestly, it reminded me of Chewbacca from Star Wars. And I immediately <laughs> thought of Sasquatch. And I thought, wow, that's a really bizarre. For If he's going to make it up, he's going to say gray alien. He's going to say to go Chewbacca route made me really stop and think about Bigfoot. And people can laugh at that, but, you know, no one has one in their garage. You know, are they an ape? Right. We don't know. People That's say right. it's a cross between an ape and a man. Well, what is that? That's a chimera. Uh, chimeras are created. Right. They aren't something natural. So uh, right. it makes you wonder a little bit on what, what's actually going on out there. But, again, brother, I appreciate coming on and, and sharing it very much. Oh, Wes, you're the best, man. I, you know, and you know, you always have a home in Brooklyn, man. Anytime you're in this way, man, stop by anytime, man. Thanks for having me. Well, thanks for the invite. I might have to take you up on that. And that's it for tonight, everyone. Remember, if you've had an encounter, shoot me an email. My email address is wes at sasquatchchronicles.com. If you get a chance, please check out sasquatchchronicles.com. You can become a member, get additional shows. We're going to close out tonight with a band from the UK uh, called Fabric, F-A-B-R-I-K, and the name of the song is called Black Lake. They're huge fans of the show. Ask me if I'd play their song. Um, I think the song is awesome. If you get a chance, check it out on iTunes and Spotify. Until next time, everyone.
an epiphany, bring the shore to life. Save me.